on this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to wire up the plug and play mimic panel from Megapoint's controllers. So what you'll see is I'll uh, take this panel apart, this box, and uh, insert a multi-panel processor and then we'll proceed to connect all of the lights and buttons. So at the end of the video, I should be left with a fully working mimic panel ready to go on the layout. To help me with this, I'll be using cable packs containing LEDs and buttons. So everything is using a cable that simply connects to and plugs in. It doesn't require any soldering. If you look at the buttons here, you'll see that they're all arranged in 12s. And what you do is you simply snap off a button as you need it. And there's my buttons ready to go. So you'll see more of that as I open this box. This particular panel has a sloping front. You can see the profile of it here. So we've got a nice slope here. It's one of the options we do, and this, this one is constructed out of MDF material, though we can do laser cut ply as well. When we ship the panel, you'll find some inserts here that can be pushed out. These are usually found on one of the protective uh, fronts holding everything together. So as I take the panel apart, What you'll observe is that I've mounted them here in advance, gluing them on with a bit of PVA so that I can mount the circuit board inside. Let's take the bottom away and I'll use the top with the fascia upside down and slot it in as my work surface. So the first job is going to be to attach the multi-panel processor to these standoffs. Here's the plug and play version of the multi-panel. Everything is connected ready for plug and play leads. So if I drop this on, it's generally a good idea to mount the multi-panel underneath the main display panel if space allows because then if you ever remove it the cables don't get to flex everything comes out as a single single piece so there's my multi-panel attached to the inside of the fascia so with the buttons it should be fairly obvious where they go because we've laser marked everything but before I put the buttons on, what I want to do is just write the numbers of each of the points so it makes sense to me when I'm wiring up. I use a fairly logical scheme, so I'll start here and it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, and then I'll come down this side. Quite simple, but if I mark it now, it'll help me to remember when I start plugging cables in. have a look and see what we're doing. So this is upside down. So I'll start with one here and work down. It's one, two, three, four. I'm only marking the outer ones on a crossover. The inner one will be the complementary LED and you'll see that in a minute. Five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and the opposite side. Hopefully, you can see what I've marked here now. So, there's a visual guide with the numbers. So with the switch cable pack, you'll find there's some mounting screws in there as well. So I'll just open this. Pull out this and put the leads to one side. So I'll just start snapping these up. So if I begin, I'll just drop the buttons in, in the obvious places.
the order they go in at this point does not matter because when we fit the cable that will determine which set of points we hook it up to later on. Each of the buttons has a tiny hole on either side and that's for the screws. So it doesn't need any great force and you don't need to drill it out either. So if I attempt to put this in on the camera, locate the screw in the hole, make sure it doesn't go anywhere and twist. Don't over tighten it, it simply needs to secure it in place. There's the first and the second. give it a nip and there's my button mounted so I'll proceed with putting the screws in for all the other buttons so on this segment now the camera's been running for seven minutes and I've attached all the buttons that really is all of the hard work done and you can see if you turn it over, everything fits and looks right. And in terms of the button mounting detail, let's see if I can get something in focus here. I don't know if you can see here if it shows up, there's just the tip of the connector touching the plywood face sorry the MDF fascia and nothing comes through on the other side it's a little we use it as a spacer but it just it, the idea is you just nip the screw up and it's in place job done so let's proceed to some wiring I'm going to connect the LEDs and hook them up next for that I'll be using two different types of LED cable the first one has two LEDs so it's got the the main and the branch indicator for the points and the main has the black line on it on the lead so I'll put the main or black to one of the outers because this is a cross crossover now with the LEDs uh, because this is MDF and it's quite pliable you simply slot them in and they don't need anything else I've never yet had one come out so I've gone into number one here and I'll plug this into number one with the black lead towards the outer edge the other type of LED cable I'm using is a single LED so all I need to do here is attach this to the number two and connect this again with the black to the outer edge, like so. Now, if you've only got the same cable type, i.e. they're all pairs, doesn't matter. So you'll attach the black to the outer and this one is unused, so you can tape it up or just push it out of the way. It doesn't really matter. Number three again, let's connect the black to the outer and the red to the center and plug it into number three. And a single LED to number four. And then I'll connect this with the black to the outer to number four. I actually love this bit. I used to hate wiring, but I find this quite relaxing now because it's just, it's almost like Meccano. I'm just plugging things in. So with half the LEDs wired up, we really should see if we're making progress or not. So I'll get some of the button leads Okay, let's take number one. Now the orientation at this point here doesn't matter yet, but you'll see how it does in a moment. Black lead to the outer goes to number one. Now, this button operates a crossover. 
So when I press one button, it's going to need to operate two sets of points at the same time. Don't worry, we've got you covered. What I need to do now is plug the second lead into the other side of the button and ensure that I've got the black leads on the same side and the red leads on the same side. That just means I'm using ground from the same connector. And now I'll plug this into number two. And we're done. Let's rinse and repeat for three and four. Three. Plugged in. And four, again ensuring that on this switch, the black leads match the same orientation. So I've got black to the right, red to the left. Or is it the other way round? I think the camera's filming upside down. If you treat the cables and the LEDs with respect, then you'll have no problems. So I think at this point it's probably worth checking that um, we're good to go on one side. I'll just bring this base on to elevate it a little bit more while I've got wires everywhere and I'll attach some power. I've got a modified servo plug here which does for power. Nip that up lightly, does not need to be tight. It's just for testing and now we can So, hope you can see the LEDs glowing there. Yes, looks good. So this one is a pair, press the button, they alternate and then the center is on. These two outer ones are on. Click the pair, the crossover moves to the center. This one moves, this one moves. Pair move together, pair move together, and this and this. So when the fascia is attached with a proper power lead, you can see how it's looking already. Looking good. So, we're what? 10 minutes in, we've done half the wiring, it's looking good, and we haven't picked up a soldering iron yet. What I'm going to do is just tie wrap these cables out of the way so that they're done. I've picked up some of these little self-adhesive tie wrap hooks on eBay. So, let's give this a go. I put this about here, done, and now I'll use a tie wrap, so let's pull all of these down here, nothing is being pulled, strained, I don't actually need that to be tight, I just need it to secure and I think that will do. That looks a bit neater and I can see the other half now. So there's half the panel wired. Right, let's do the other half. So you know what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to work through it. Okay, so the LEDs are wired up. Let's do the buttons. Okay, so 10 minutes in, we've done the other side. Let's reconnect some power and check it works. So I've reattached the power, we'll turn it over and we'll see how it looks. So for this side, Correct, 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 correct. So we're pretty wired up now. What I'm going to do is tidy things up whilst I put the camera battery back on charge and I'll see you shortly. So I'm going to attach the power. Master light is on, run light is flashing about once a second, looking good. Let's dr drop my power in for now. I use a battery on the bench. Drop the panel down. Lower the fascia on. And don't forget the fascia, nothing attaches directly to it. 
so it can be removed if required. And then finally the bezel. I'll probably put some tape around this when I'm finished rather than glue it, but you're free to glue it, tack it down. And there's the finished panel. Press a button and this pair of LEDs flash to indicate that my track is straight or the crossover is active. First one, second one, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. And then we've got the second ones here on this side with everything working as it should. That's 24 points wired up, ready to go. Thanks for watching.